Welcome to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining with me. I have Eric Gelb, director of PKF O'Connor Davies. Eric, welcome to the show. Good to see you. Thank you very much. All right, you're a CPA specializing in transaction advisory, due diligence, and M&A. And you're also a leader in business development and client services. So do you think private equity has been a good investment over the last, say, 10 years? I would say so, especially with the decline in market interest rates and the very low market interest rates uh, for seven, eight, 10 years. So that's really given uh, a boost to the power of leverage, which has really uh, basically put a lot of money in a lot of investors' pockets. There's, a, there's another part of that equation, and that's liquidity. Can you elaborate on how people are, are dealing with liquidity relating to private equity? Sure. Uh, our accounting firm, PKF O'Connor Davies, we serve uh, thousands of clients. We're the 29th largest firm in the country. And many of the, especially the higher net worth folks, they invest in private equity uh, through funds or direct. If they're investing either way in private equity, what we've seen is the holding period is a long time. So unlike the S&P 500 or some other uh, New York Stock Exchange publicly traded stock that you could click uh, on your bro friendly online broker and get in and out in a moment's notice, private equity is very difficult to uh, exit, let's say. So we are seeing at least the funds, they, they could have a life of 10 years. Uh, a lot of the funds seem to want to have a closing date so that they could close the fund and perhaps uh, organize and launch a new fund. Uh, but the holding period could be very, very long. So and then it's difficult to borrow against those uh, holdings. And um, if you do want to get out, there are some secondary market platforms the challenge there is one would uh, face a steep haircut on an exit valuation. Those are a couple of the pitfalls. Do you see any other uh, pitfalls that you would say would be the biggest ones? Uh, I think uh, and the there's issues relating to some of the costs of these funds, uh, whether it's the ability to deduct the uh, ongoing fees of fund charges uh, for tax purposes. And also, um, sometimes the as an investor in a fund, the fund management, the general partners dictate uh, when to liquidate a fund, when to hold it, and that that could could be a downside uh, if an investor prefers control or some sort of control. Okay, good answer. The um, the next place I want to go is uh, the thought leadership piece that you co-authored. Uh, can you give us an idea or two about how to make a, a smarter acquisition if you're in this space? Well, one thing, and you know, maybe this is uh, given my history regarding uh, accounting, uh, there is a really important uh, mission to figure out exactly what you're buying. So what is included in a deal? What is excluded? Uh, we, we did see one case recently where uh, there was some software and other intellectual property that was licensed to the company our client was looking at buying. And a separate company, sort of an investment company or an intellectual property company, owned that intellectual property. And there was a licensing agreement uh, to the company that our client was looking to buy. So we really ended up having to dive into that. Uh, some years ago, on a separate note, it was a, a chemical plant transaction. Uh, it was really a financing rather than an M&A transaction. But the land for this particular client's plant was inside, if you sort of pick uh, concentric circles, so the land that this client owned was inside another company's uh, footprint. And it turned out there was no easement for uh, our clients' trucks and uh, transportation mechanism systems to leave the property. So we, good thing we looked at that and we made sure that they beefed up and improved that easement agreement so they actually had the right <laughs> to transport their goods back and forth. So knowing what you're buying, knowing what you're not getting, and trying to 
uh, really fix it so that you're buying what you want to buy is really important. Uh, and then really understanding all the economic drivers that go with that or don't go with that. Uh, the other piece is, uh, and this probably shock you, I don't know, Bill, but uh, companies that are selling may try to beef up the current year's earnings. Uh, or, you know, so uh, if, if you believe in your experiences that a company will trade at a multiple of earnings. So we do a lot of work surrounding uh, quality of earnings. And if we try to ferret out uh, and get to a sustainable earnings revenue model, uh, so we can help the client and the company, the buyer, have good projections and zero in on the right value. So in other words, if you had a choice, uh, you might try to accelerate sales into 2018, the current year, and then you might want to defer expenses into 2019. So what we try to do is create a normalized earnings uh, number so that we can really zero in on what the actual operations and economics of the target are. And then uh, we can try to get to a value and negotiate to that point. Got it. Let's change gears for a second here. The U.S. passed new tax laws late last year. Any insights on that? Uh, I think it continues to be complicated. Uh, some people, at least where we're, I'm based in New York, uh, are feeling that the tax laws will uh, help them despite the changes in uh, the personal tax rules. Uh, there's a continuing trend towards trade or business. So if you are in business, uh, then, you know, uh, expenses typically related to business are often deductible. But it's really, I would say, more important than ever to work with uh, your tax advisors, whether that's a CPA, an attorney or other accountant, to really get your arms around your own situation and facts and circumstances to make sure that um, you're in, in compliance with the IRS and state laws. Uh, we have seen an increase in examinations uh, at the higher income levels. So, you know, given uh, a lot of your audience, I think they could be subject to that. So it's very important to uh, get your arms around the rules and then uh, position yourself and then file tax returns that are in, in sync with those IRS or other tax rules. Yes, everybody will agree with that. Now, um, you've, I've heard you say before, two most important components of a transaction or investment is how you get out and what happens if everything goes wrong. This is going to be a big question for everybody to want to know the answer to. Well, it really it depends on how you are, what the business is. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to think about, go, on the going in analysis, how do we get out? So how do we monetize that? There's many ways to monetize that. One is taking in uh, other investors, perhaps. The other is uh, accelerating cash flow. The other is increasing the strength of the balance sheet and the financial strength of the company. And of course, that depends on where a company is in, in its life cycle and what, what they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, what business they're in. But when you can create liquidity, even if you can't sell shares in it, uh, that's one way to increase the liquidity. Uh, the other thing is there are secondary platforms and market platforms where you can uh, offer pre-IPO shares to people. Uh, so that in some cases for the right companies has become popular as a way to bring in other investment capital uh, and perhaps uh, including selling for, for initial and early shareholders selling some of their holdings. Okay, got it. Now, PKF O'Connor Davies Family Office serves wealthy families and you provide tax and accounting and bill payment. Um, why the trend in outsourcing? Uh, the, many of these folks uh, have businesses and they want to focus on growing the business or um, creating transactions. So we have sort of a couple of different groups of people. Uh, some of them were formerly hedge fund owners and general partners, and then they shut down their funds or they left their fund. And then 
so now they're managing their own family's money. So in that case, we could provide the whole back office, uh, except for really prime brokerage. And we work with wealth advisors and other folks who do that. Uh, and usually the client brings them to us. Other folks are in the real estate business and we do all the outsourced accounting for that. We can do rent, you know, rent and other accounting and just business accounting. Uh, and then other people have uh, in, had a liquidity event, whether that's through a sale of a business or a sale of a publicly traded stock position. So they want to enjoy life. And they say, I, I don't want to deal with this. I have a complex array of investments. Many of them work with more than one wealth advisor. Uh, so then what we do is we aggregate all of the data and create, we track it for people. So we create consolidated custom reports uh, so that they can make more informed investment decisions. And then that also often leads to uh, bill payment uh, and budgeting, cash management from that standpoint, and then the tax because they're integrally related. Got it. Eric, thanks for being a guest on today's show. Appreciate this. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You've been watching CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.